Hello and welcome to our live broadcast. My name is Christy and I work uh, here at USD with Dr. Eric Fritzvold. Uh, whether you are watching live with us or if you are watching the replay, please comment and say hi uh, and let us know that you're here. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Dr. Eric Fritzvold. Well, thanks so much, Christy, and thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I have the distinct honor and pleasure of being the founding faculty member of this 100% online Master of Science degree in law enforcement and public safety leadership, and now serve as the academic director. And the purpose of us coming here together today is frankly to celebrate the heck out of one of our students. We really believe that students are the heartbeat of our program and student experience and sharing best practices across geography and across job descriptions um, is really a unique value add for our program. And with that guiding mantra in mind, this last semester we rolled out a new initiative, a discussion board most valuable player initiative. And we rolled this out in the Lepsil 570 course. It's called Public Policy Innovation, it used to be called Community Assessment. And students got to vote for a colleague and fellow student that they felt really raised the level of discourse and who's uh, knack for engagement and evidence and argumentation really raised the level across our classroom. And so I am deeply honored and very, very excited to be able to recognize the first ever winner of our discussion board, most valuable player award, the chief of police from the city of Ithaca police department, Dennis Nayer. Huge congratulations, Dennis. And thanks for joining us here. Dr. Fritzvoll, thank you for, um, those kind words and Thanks for having me. This is, this is a, an awesome honor. So a little bit of context, and then I'm going to grill you with a handful of questions here, Chief. Um, our interactive discussion boards, we pose roughly one or two substantive questions per week. They dovetail with the substantive material from that unit. And students are typically asked to marshal evidence from the, uh, the course curriculum and combine that with their lived experience in a meaningful answer. So. Um, Chief, based on how many folks supported you for this MVP award, what motivates you to be so engaged on our discussion boards? I think like we talked offline, they're always so relevant. And um, as, the, as the initial post goes out, I spend a bit of time thinking, how can I really just put something together that, that is substantive and that people can relate to and that it answers the question, but doesn't just answer it because um, it, it meets a rubric, but because people can get it and, and, and it'll cause others to start thinking as well. Because we wear different uniforms and work in different jurisdictions, we all have the same challenges. And um, so for me, I think that's really important because it connects us and it shows us that we have so many similarities. So, um, so I'm motivated by that. And it all relates to things I'm doing. And like I said, I sometimes think that there's a, a Lepsil camera following me because we're dealing with critical issues and I'm dealing with those same issues or I'm looking at an issue within my organization and it's something that we're covering in our organizational theory and change class. So it's easy because they're all relevant. And I think that's really the best way to say it. I'm really happy to hear that. Clearly our purpose is to provide the best, highest utility service we possibly can. and. I also am struck by just how universal some of these challenges are across geography and across rank. Um, well, with that as the backstory, I'm also struck by just how darn busy our students are. Clearly, you respond to emergencies for a living. Your days are unpredictable. I can imagine from a chief executive position, the broad array of stakeholders uh, to whom you're accountable is pretty significant. Um, how do you find time to be so engaged with the discussion board and the online classes? And do you have a, a strategy that you might recommend to others? Yeah, you know, for me, I've always worked well within structure, very much so. And I think um, I'm in my 25th year within this profession. And I think that's kind of carved out that ability to do so. As a matter of fact, it's, it's easier for me to have structure than to not. And um, so the initial discussion board, that's really the, the most challenging one to make sure that it's, it's articulate and it, and it makes sense and it's well written. But the ones after that, those are actually pretty easy because I just flip open my laptop, I see who's posted what, and I'm always reading them. But some of them are something that I just feel like I connect very well with and I'll put a response to that. And it's not heavy lift. It's just because I'm constantly thinking of what our my Ooh, 
looks like we might have a little bit of a frozen screen. Um, That's what I'm seeing on my end as well here, Chrissy. Oh, oh and you're back. Back <laughs> oh, you're back. <laughs> you're back. Uh, uh, the miracles of modern technology. I think you left yeah. off. Uh, you're talking okay. about working well in structure and that that, that follow-up post really is pretty natural and organic. Yeah, it really is. And and some of them, I don't I don't like to just post something to put something out there. But if there's something that I strongly connect with or resonates with something that's um, that maybe was in my post, I'll say something. And um, for me, it's also good because I get to connect with my colleagues in the class. So um, so that's not really the heavy lift. And I think it's because it's such an, a, a relevant um, program that it's, it's just almost like a basic conversation. And we do try to build from uh, adult learning and online learning best practices to try to mimic those free flowing conversations as best we can online. Uh, so Chief, be forewarned, I'm gonna embarrass you here a little bit. Okay. When students vote for a discussion board MVP, they have an opportunity to provide an attendant rationale. So here's a few things that your fellow students had to say um, as they nominated you. Quote, Dennis always provides an informational, well thought out and educated response throughout all of his discussion board posts. Dennis also responds to most classmates and has full on informational and educational conversations throughout the discussion board, which makes his post excel and frankly benefits everyone in the class. Another one of your peers uh, phrased it uh, quite nicely. He said, Dennis is a discussion board beast and hands down the MVP. Now that's good argumentation. Not only does he post very lengthy and detailed posts, but he responds to almost everybody else's discussion board posts on a regular basis. So your work clearly resonates with your peers. You talk a little bit about substance, um, but as you're reading your colleagues' posts or posting your own, what makes for a high quality discussion board post? Um, you know, I think to show that someone, they're connecting their post with um, real life experiences and that they're not just following like a cookie cutter approach to, okay, I answered it. And, and I like how it's presented that people don't, they can cite their opinions and they can, they can differ in what they think and it doesn't have to agree with the, the mainstream. And um, I think, I think just the fact that a post is, is, is real and it's genuine and authentic to the person. And that's usually supported throughout the post. One of the other things is the reason I'm always replying is I think just on a human human level, if someone replies to my post, they're going to get at least, hey, thank you. And I appreciate you contacting back because I would do that in person. And just because I'm not in person because of the distance learning, they're still getting a reply back. And um, and yeah, so it, it, it's it's as long as I think a person doesn't have, well, I'm only going to do discussion boards on Tuesday and on my paper on Friday. I think that's where the challenge would be. A day doesn't go by where, or multiple times where I'm not log on. Hey, what's going on on the post? And and I'm so I'm staying fluid with it. So I think that's that's the other thing that makes it easier for me. And I appreciate that. I think staying fluid with the program is really the key to success, both on the faculty and student end. Staying engaged, the discussion boards. I find them the most fun and rewarding part of this experience. And I learned just so darn much from them. Um, so taking a step out more broadly here, Chief, um, you're clearly a chief of police in New York, um, sitting in your office there at your station. I am sitting in my garage office here in my home near campus in San Diego. We are 3000 miles apart. How does a chief from New York learn about our law enforcement leadership program? Um, so, I was a graduate of the FBI National Academy, and I, I was linked through the FBI National Academy Associates, who um, I would always get emails from, and I always respected very much the the program and everything connected to it, and it, it had it had built itself a foundation of respect. So when I had gotten something from the University of San Diego saying that they had now partnered with the National Academy, I thought that was something I'd look into, and. Um, Truth be told, I've had for years thinking of I'm going to complete my master's, but it was just one of those things where I was always super busy. And, and more important than that, I had never found a program that I really connected with. It was either looking at MPA programs, which it just it wasn't my uh, my thing and um, criminal justice, which was maybe very specific to just teaching. But I wanted something that was practical to what I'm doing every day. And when I looked into this program and I called up, the responses were really good. I, I got calls back right away, and um, 
And one thing led to another. Then I called you as the department chair, the head person from the faculty who answered all my questions. And you actually did what most don't. You understood from an academic perspective the difference and you validated that there is a difference. And to me, that was huge because understanding that our jobs are so unique, but knowing that theory should drive our practice and our practice should form the theory that drives us out of the circle. And I felt, I think I found it in this program. So that's how I found it and how I'm here. Oh, wonderful. Well, I can speak on behalf of the entire team and all the students when we are just so fortunate to have you on board for many of the reasons that your discussion board beast advocate um, articulated so well. Uh, as we wind down here, Chief, any final words for our law enforcement and public safety leadership community? No, I just, I think, you know, if anyone's looking for, well, for those in the program, I think they'll all agree that this is just such an awesome and well-suited program. And my friends and colleagues on the West Coast, they may be dealing with different laws and policies, but the challenges are the same. The coronavirus that's going on right now isn't discriminating because you live on the East Coast versus the West Coast or the central part of the, the country. And, and our challenges, um, whether it's um, new laws coming from the East Coast or the West, they influence, they both influence each other. So I think this program is, is really good because it ties us all together and we realize we're dealing with the same challenges and, um, and if nothing else, if it doesn't change it, it at least knows we're all, we're, we're all dealing with the same situation. And I think the other thing I'll just add is, um, so I come from a very unique perspective in that so I came up through the ranks of my first agency. It was a small city in upstate New York and full service agency. And it was busy, two colleges in the city and it was really busy. And I had done 21 and a half years there. And then um, I retired with the last almost five years as a police chief, having come up through the ranks. And um, I got to a point that, hey, everything I ever thought was worth doing in law enforcement, I had the chance to do and it was really cool. And I'm gonna try something else. And I was not really two months out before I really missed the mission because there's something that is so unique to this. But with that, so I see things from an, an inside perspective, from an outside perspective, and now back from an inside perspective because I said, well, I still have more energy and drive and I'm gonna go back and now I'm a chief in a, in a bigger city with some more challenges, but some um, awesome, awesome police officers and awesome, um, opportunities and, and things that just really um, make me love being back in it. But what I will say is that I think for everyone to just know that I think we learn all the things from a theoretical point of view and we learn uh, through our training and through you know best practices. But the one thing we should never ever discard is that human element of policing. Because what we do matters so much and we affect people. We sometimes have to take away people's freedoms. We have to make arrests. We have to deal with situations that are unpleasant. But in the end, I think it's just sometimes a, um, a set of circumstances that could be any one of us in that other end of the spectrum where maybe we took a wrong turn in life or maybe some, um, some things didn't work out right. And now we're in a position that we, we see from the opposite side now. So I guess what I'm trying to say is just for all of us to remember that we're just stewards in positions. We can do our best to kind of um, help people, protect people. And in the end, we won't do this job forever. So the difference we make is really based on, you know, how much we can build our agencies or um, use our roles as a platform to do good. And, and in the end, when, when, when we retire, we can, I think, look back and just be super proud of what we've done. Well, Chief, in the true change-making spirit, I really appreciate that human-centric reflection on your role. I can say for me as an academic, as an outsider looking in, it's such a privilege to be able to learn alongside you and your colleagues and share these critical debates and conversations. So I uh, can't thank you enough for bringing your experience, this unique professional trajectory, and all your thoughtfulness to the Law Enforcement Leadership Program. Thank you for very much for the time today. And uh, Chief, thank you. And I think we'll kick it back to Christy here. 
Yes, thank, thank you. you both so much uh, for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, to all of you watching on the live stream or uh, those of you watching on the replay, thanks so much for spending the time with us today. Um, if you are not a student and you're thinking about the Lepsol program, um, we invite you to visit us on our website, learn a little bit more. I dropped it, the link in the chat, um, but criminaljustice.sandiego.edu. Um, feel free to connect with us there and learn more. But thank you all so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, and healthy, please. Yes, you as well. Thank you. Take care.